Welcome to an installment of Huron's Huddle being hosted today by myself, Ryan Hartley. Quick information about myself. I'm a channel partner lead for Huron's data management analytics. I have been doing master data management and enterprise information management for 15 years in industries of high tech, manufacturing, financial services, higher ed, and B2B to B2C retail. So let's get into today's Huron Huddle topic, which is one of our partners, Boomi. And today we're going to talk about mastering customer data with the Boomi platform. You can always find out more information outside of this video at boomi.com. So our use case today is around an organization that has multiple starting points for editing their records for customer data. They're causing problems with their invoices not going to the correct location, and they do not have good data governance and data strategy around centralizing the data. This organization needs to look to having a centralized database for unifying all of their records from their different domains, from customer to supplier, to products, to items, to employees. In this example, we're talking about just customer domain. So handling a single location for all of their customer data, as well as looking for data quality, not only for eliminating duplicate customer records in their system, but also enriching and cleansing their addresses, their emails, their phone numbers. They need the ability to do a, a inbound from multiple source systems into a central location, but they also need the ability to send the data outward to all the different related systems that either have provided them data or need to have this new golden record of their customer records. And that is the hub and spoke. The last two is, is the ability to quickly bring new systems on board as they acquire new systems, having the ability to take a catalog of their enterprise definition of a specific domain and provide it to the organization that they're acquiring to have them quickly map their systems into the existing centralized hub. And the last one is the global hierarchy and reporting. And this is gonna be understanding how a company reports up to each other. So we're gonna go through a walkthrough today. We're gonna to talk about our master data hub, our catalog and prep and our flow. So let's get into that now. So this is our platform.boomy.com. In here, if you log into platform.boomy.com, in here you will find our integration, our master data hub, our API, our flow, our data catalog and prep. All of this is available to us by just literally clicking into each one of these and it switches over to that part of the platform. So there's no need to log out or have multiple applications having to be ran at the same time as we need the ability to quickly click over or switch to, to the different parts of the platform. Right now, I have selected our master data hub. This is where we're gonna start. Our master data hub uh, written down here has some multiple sub areas, which includes our dashboard, our repositories, our models, our sources, and then our reporting and stewardship. When we talk about master data hub, the first thing we're needing to do is look to build a model. So we can come into our model area, and I have a lot of different models in mind, but we can come in here and go and say, create a new model. And so we'll create this one called a demo customer model. So the model name is being created here at the top. The next thing we're gonna do is actually add fields. There are three different ways to add fields into our master data hub. The first way is, is we can actually import it from a profile. So if you have another master data management system, we can actually connect to that and import that in if it's, if it's importable. The second way that we can do it is actually use our hub suggest. So our hub suggest is, is, uh, sits on top of our master data management and looks across all the different uh, models that are out there today and gives predictive analysis on what should be in each of these specific domains. So on uh, my screen right now, I have account, customer, all the way down to vendor. I'm gonna click on the customer one. And in here, it starts giving us the suggestions of what these attributes are going to be in a wizard form. So we have 27 high confidence that we that they believe that these are going to be attributes that you will need in your model. 
There are 15 that are 50-50 chance, and then there are 68 attributes that we've seen a couple times, but we don't have strong uh, confidence that you will use those attributes. And it's very much a wizard screen. So we just go next, it gives our high confidence ones, and you can see a list of those. I'm just going to say next on this. I'm going to come into my medium and actually uncheck boxes and say, you know, comments is not a master data uh, attribute, but country is. So I'm going to select the country one, push next again, and then we're in our low confidence ones. And I'm just going to ignore all of these. Push next, where we get our Reader's Digest version of what is all the different attributes we just selected. When we push finish, now we have all of our attributes onto the, onto the screen. And our third way of adding attributes to it is actually going here to our add a field or field group and typing in that attribute. So I can call this one our test attribute, give it our different types. So I'll keep mine as text for this use case. And I can say this is a required field and that we can only handle 20 characters in this field. I push save on that. And then if I scroll to the very bottom of this list, you can see my, my test attributes uh, sitting in here. And at any point in time, I can actually come in and, and edit this and, and change it up as needed. So those are our three ways that we can do master data management of adding attributes. I'm actually gonna come out of this model that we just created. So I'm gonna cancel this out and ignore my warning that I'm gonna lose everything. And we're gonna come into a model that already exists out here. And the reason for that is I want to show you some different formats of this. So in here, we have these collapsible groups called field groups. So instead of adding an attribute, we can add a field group. And these field groups allow for us to do a reusable group, meaning that if I have alternative names, and those alternative names might be doing business as or nickname, and we need to have multiple alternative names for this customer, we use these field groups. And these field groups allow us to do repeatable option, repeatable uh, function of this group. So every time I have a new uh, alternative name, I will create an alternative ID, and that is what makes it unique for this group. And as long as that alternative name ID is, is different, it will continue to add into here. So giving you that repeatable process of a record. And, and we have that for multiple areas. As we talk about, you might have a phone number that is a cell phone number versus a fax versus a home. We will have that ability to store multiple addresses, multiple alternative addresses, um, primary addresses across the board. So this is a, this is a model. Um, this is one of our models that, uh, that Kiron brings when we talk through doing services for Boomi for a, a client. Uh, our next area is our match rules. So in our match rules, this is again, the same wizard setup where we can come in, add a match rule. And so I can select any attribute that I've created on the screen. So I might say I'm creating a match rule for full name and I'm also creating a match on city. So I'll add city in here. So at this point, what we are saying is we're matching exactly on full name and exactly on city. Now, most of the time that will create uh, less matches because we want to, to actually do fuzzy matching on full name to get the different variances of a first and last name. So we'll actually come in to edit our full name and we'll go into our advanced configuration. And in here where we have our equal sign, we'll actually go to a similar to, which is our fuzzy matching and use one of our five matching algorithms from Jarrah Winkler, Levenstein, all the way down to Soundex. And this will allow for us to, to, to create that fuzzy algorithm that is needed for your system. So when I look at full name, I'll use Levenstein and I will change my tolerance level down to 80%. And this will take multiple iterations with, with your implementation on what is going to be the matching, we call it our match tuning exercises. And, and the Boomi Professional Services and Heron will help you with also which algorithm will fit well for your, each of your attributes. So for this one, I'm going to do Levenstein, 80%, push save. And now what we get is our incoming full name is going to do a similar to Levenstein match to the full name with an exact on city. Push save sits down here at the bottom. And we can move this up and down our list so I can make it number one on our list. 
And so what that means now is, is every time a record comes into the system, we will look to this match rule and say, does it match this? If it doesn't, it goes to the next and goes through the whole entire list to see if it matches to any existing records in the system before it creates our, uh, our new golden record. Once you create your model, you can also have sources that are going to tie to this. This means that as we look at what systems are going to be part of this, I might say I have done Bradstreet, that is going to be part of our, our creation of a record. And we're going to have, uh, we'll have Salesforce be part of this record. I'll push add. To, to create survivorship, we actually go into our rank sources and our rank sources, we will say, click on full name and we will say Salesforce needs to survive over Dun and Bradstreet. And then we can come into our localized full name and say, you know, Dun Bradstreet should survive over Salesforce. So the more systems you have in here, we can stack rank them for survivorship. And that allows for us to understand how a record sh should survive as a golden record. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. I'm gonna close out of this. So the last thing I'm gonna show to you today on this is our stewardship screens. These are our technical stewardship screens. So the idea is, is that you can come in here and look at any of your records that have been created in Master Data Management as a golden record. I can click into them. So let me come up here to my uh, B2B party model and we can see uh, Fitch rating. I can click on Fitch rating and see how that record once it loads, how that record looks in a technical view. So this is all of our different uh, attributes that are sitting on our screen. We can see the address information about this record. We can start seeing any uh, electronic email addresses, phone numbers. And so it shows you uh, the repeatable groups in here. So if there was another record for phone number, it would sit in here as well. But this shows you your technical view of the record. We can go in edit this record at any point in time, provide more information. So I can say it's actually suite 201, 2001, push save. And now that record is going to go through all the match merge, all the data quality again, and either come back into my golden record system or it'll come into my quarantine. So our quarantine actually sits in here in our stewardship in a different category. I come into my quarantine, we can come in and see different things from what is our data quality issues. So in here, we can have a whole list of data quality issues from missing fields, data matching errors, um, minimum requirements are missing. So you can create a whole bunch of different data validations. And so on these, these are all missing uh, duplicate. They all have du duplicate information. Um, this one's actually missing address ID. So we would come into this record, open it up and, uh, actually go into our address information and provide that address information on editing the record at this point. The other thing that we do in here is actually our stewardship for our candidates. So if I come into one of these other records and click on potential duplicates, in here you will see that, that we have a potential duplicate. I can click into this record. I can look to my match details over on my right side of the screen. And in here, it's going to tell you what you matched on. So we can see that this record matched on a full name fuzzy matching, as well as an address line one fuzzy matching, and then exact on city, state, country, and state, or sorry, city, country, and state. And what we'll do is actually go and look at that and do a comparison. I call it the cars.com comparison, where we're going to look at that first record to the second record. And when we look at this, it has 100% match, and we had a threshold of 80%. So we're good there. The second is our address, and we can see that we have one at uh, North Pole Mills Division at uh, 1700 uh, West 70, 70th Avenue. And what we see is, is that the second record has this intercon pulp versus the North Northwood pulp. And so it scored an 87%, and we had a threshold of 85 so at this point, we can say, yes, this looks like it's a good match because the city, state, and country are exactly the same. And we can close this out. We can go look at that record if we wanted to. Or we can come in here and say, match this record down. And these two would get matched down together. So that is the short and skinny on master data management.
we're now going to go look at uh, data qual data data catalog and prep. So I'm going to you know, click in here into my data catalog and prep, which I already have open. So our data catalog and prep has a lot of different functions into it. Today, we're really teaching you like it's a cell phone, how to text and call. If you want to later learn how to play Angry Birds on here, uh, you, there is a lot of other functionality like ETL um, that, can, that can help you with large data quality or data loads. Um, so in our data catalog and prep, what we're looking at doing is, is one, we're trying to connect to systems for crawling our data for profiling. And those systems here are, are what we call our adapters. So we go look to our adapters to what we can crawl and look at. And so data catalog and prep have a whole bunch of different uh, connectors on their screen here that we can connect to. Uh, you can see that we've turned on our, our Hive records. If I go down into Salesforce here, we can see that we've connected our Salesforce system. There is a whole bunch of different systems that we can look to connect to. So from this, what we do is, is we come in and we install that connector. We can come back to our manage. And the first thing we're going to do is actually go and connect that source system in. So I have mine set up here as Salesforce and data. And, and this has our, our different uh, connectors that we got going on. So from Salesforce, I have my, you know, what is my connector? I turned on Salesforce adapter, and then I'm going to give it the username, the password, and the token information. Each one of these adapters is going to have different uh, credentialing going on or different parameters that are needed. So as you connect to different other systems, this might look very different. But we have our Salesforce uh, AIM data one that we have uh, added in here. And it's as simple as pushing the, the button up at the top and saying, what is that source system we're trying to do and going through the wizard screens for that. But once you've done that, you can actually come up here into the Explore. And the Explore is where I'm going to come into my data set. And so these data sets in here are, are, will be tagged by the, the data source that you gave it. So mine was called Salesforce AIM data. And you can see that it was a schema called that is Salesforce and who it was created by. But it, it has gone through and crawled through each one of those systems and brought back all these different tables. Some of these tables like account at the top, we know very well. There are other tables that sit in Salesforce that we don't use much that are more system administrative tables. But as I click into account, what it's going to provide me is actually a whole entire uh, list of of information about what sits in my Salesforce. So we see our different systems here at the top. It has started to catalog things like, this looks like city, this looks like state. I can actually click into this and we can see that we do have three records of Massachusetts versus the rest of these are, are one record and this is a, a demo environment. So we, we definitely don't have a lot of, uh, of different style records. But as we go through each one of these, we can actually click into the columns and see what is our frequency of records. We also can see you know, our different profiling results. What is our uniqueness? How many records are in here? How many have nulls in them? Um, what is our top values versus our low values? So if you have a larger organization, this is gonna be thousands of records of Massachusetts versus hundreds of records from Alabama. If we can come over into our values section and you can start seeing things like, hey, this is interesting. I have Florida um, as FL, and I also have Florida as, as Florida spelled out. So one of the data quality things that we're going to want to look at as we look at this data is things like Florida and understanding that I have FL for Florida sitting out here, and I also have Florida spelled out. And we need to get to a a reusable function for standardizing Florida to being FL or being spelled out, depending on what your data governance team is. The other thing that we will look at is our ability to come into a, a attribute that might be PII or is a very sensitive data. So I have the ability in here that if I think that a record and I just picked master record ID is, is set for PII, I can actually come in here and check box that this is PII and I can mask it all. I can do half mask or I can show partial of it. 
And, and it gives you that ability to say, what do you want to do from a partial mask or a partial show? And so right now I'm just saying mask all of it. And as administrator, I have that ability to check this on and off. So as other stewards come in here, we have the ability to, uh, to for them to, to not be able to see this and they won't have the ability to unmask it. And that is one of the great things about data catalog and prep is, is that as a non-administrator, and I will come in here and show you this, this access area, and we're just gonna discard what we have going on the screen. As a non-administrator, we can create all kinds of different uh, different kinds of roles in our data catalog and prep and allows us to create things like data analysts that can come in and view data but can't go in and create new systems. Uh, we have a data catalog manager that can come in and, and look at uh, different profiling result sets but can't change up API information. So we have this ability to go in and, and change and, and add roles uh, to our data catalog and prep or groups for in our data catalog and prep to allow for users when they come in to have different abilities to see, view, and act with the data. I'm going to come back in here one more time into my data set. I'm going to go back into my account list and just call out a couple additional things. So in here, you know, every one of our systems, we should look to have a data dictionary for understanding, is this name a bill to, a ship to, or sold to customer? What is a type? Is it just customer or is there partners involved? And so we can come over into our data dictionary at the top here and start laying that out. And so from a technical side, what we're going to get is a whole bunch of, of different imported information from bar chars and all that. We can set this up here. If I edit this, I can call this my Ryan's values and, and, and create a column for storing any information from, from Ryan's values. Um, as we put a standard list together of things that we should be having in our data dictionary across the board, like who owns this attribute? What is our business definition of it? And what sources define it? Those are going to be areas that is going to be important to us for, for typing in from the business side or the data owner side on each one of these records for searching in the future. And the interesting piece of this is, is we can also provide ratings on these records. So if we don't believe that something has a right business definition, I can actually cover over this and give it a different rating. And that gives us the ability to start looking at, do we trust the name column for, uh, for, for Salesforce versus another attribute in this list. So it gives us that ability to, to, to provide uh, scoring on each of our data attributes. But a lot of what I like is the ability to come in here. I can type in any information as a owner of the system that would tell me the definition for each one of my columns. I can add more additional columns as needed um, over on my right. There we go. So I can say demo info, and now that is being saved in here. And we can actually come over here to my um, my name field for my demo, and I can type in uh, test one, two, three. Push save on that. And now it's actually gone in and, and stored that information about my my master record ID being test one, two, three. If I come back out here to my, my main screen, I can go in and type in test one, two, three, and go over to my result sets of all in data dictionaries. And it's gonna start showing me where I have test one, two, three in it. So it's actually also going in and indexing this, which is really great for us to understand where records sit. So if I were to type in, I'm looking for customer, it's going to provide me all the different attributes that have customer in it. It's going to provide me columns that have customer name in it. And it's going to provide me data dictionaries where we have the word customer written into any of the columns as well. So it is a very well organized system for understanding our data catalog and prep. So moving back over into our platform here, 
we're going to actually go over into our integration layer. And our Boomi integration layer is all around building out uh, different mapping. So let me close out a whole bunch of things here so that we can have a clean slate on our screen here. All right. So in our integration layer, what we're going to do is we actually will cr create connectors to our different systems. So um, in here, we can have the ability to create a whole bunch of different connections from our sales forces, from database systems, APIs seem to be a very common thing nowadays with any cloud-based systems. We can connect to any database, but there is a lot of different connectors out here that we can create a connector to as you look to needing to connect to a system like uh, if I come to NetSuite. Uh, NetSuite has all these predefined attributes that will allow for you to connect to it. So when you look at NetSuite connector versus I look at a Salesforce connector, you're gonna see a lot of different parameters from that Salesforce versus that NetSuite. And that is what, how it is built into the wrapper for each one of those. But as you connect to each of these systems, you'll have the ability to create a, a, a process. And let me see if I can actually just open up one here on my screen. Um, so let me uh, come in here to my, uh, uh, my sandbox and come into a, my accounting program here. And we'll just open up uh, loading a spreadsheet. And what you have on, on loading a, a spreadsheet is, is the ability to start the process. And then from the process, we can do a whole bunch of different things from adding caches, adding programs, looking at logic of, of route shapes or, or mapping functions. If I actually come into a mapping, we you can see that we actually come in and we are gonna connect and grab data from our Salesforce system here. And we can create a mapping to what I'm calling my Google Sheets. And our mapping is purely saying, grab all the attributes from Salesforce and grab all the attributes from, in this case, our Google Sheet and have the ability to just drag over. So if I uncheck, undrag this and pull it over, this is as simple as how we're doing our mapping. Now we have the ability in our uh, function area to do all kinds of functions from I want to create uh, the ability to trim records or uppercase records. I need to do a mathematical equation with numeric information. Um, so we have all these preset uh, processes that we can come in and use. So I can look at I want to go and uppercase a record. So I can come in here add that uppercase and I can say, all right, is one goes in as my uppercase. And if I were just to remove one of these and drag the results into row ID, now every time is one is, is a value is in there, it will come in uppercase that record and go out. So it, it has a lot of the quick accelerators built into our function area. The other thing that we can do is, is actually create our map functions. So as we look at map functions, we can actually look at um, the ability to, to create new, new functions that are reusable. So I can come in here and say, I'm creating a email address coming in and I can come to my output and say, it's my email address cleaned up. And so, so now this function every time can be used and you just drag on the other screen to my email address and it will have an output to it. And we can do a lot of different things from, I want to uh, trim my records. I'm gonna add that to the screen here and I'm going to uppercase my records and add that to the screen. And so email address is going to go through an uppercase, then it's going to go into a trim on the right and then go out. I push save and close. And now if I look down near the bottom here, we are up near the top, we can now look for email address which this one doesn't have email address on it, but we can take a pretend email address into our map function, and then we can have that output to whatever our outstream, downstream system is. So lots of different uh, ability to do different data quality rules in here. If you've got one to go even more uh, crazier, you can go into what we call our custom scripting. And here I can go and select scripting and use Groovy or JavaScript. I'm a JavaScript guy here myself. Come in here and add in all kinds of uh, character sets like in record is equal to 
out record. And that basically means that my input needs to have in rec and out rec. And really realistically, it would be out rec is equal to in rec. Not sure what happened there. Add, push OK. And now you're going to get this custom scripting that as you were to do NREC, I've gone through a whole bunch of interesting scripting, now can come out to my OutREC. So that's a quick and dirty on integrations. Uh, we can connect to everything, which is great. So when we look at master data management, we will look to using Boomi Integrate to move that data from those legacy systems into our connector into master data hub, as well as from our master data hub channels out to our, uh, our, our downstream data lakes and other systems. The last part of this demo is, is talking about Boomi Flow. So Flow is gonna have that ability for us to create the, the different applications that sit up on top. So I'm gonna show you a couple of those examples on there. Flow is a low code, no code solution. So the idea is, is that you can drag a lot on the screen. So here we have our different customers that are sitting on our screen. Um, this is right now querying against our master data management solution and bringing back the different records onto our screen. We only have two records in this case. I can select a record. And what we get is, is on our left side of our screen is going to be all the information about master data management. And you can see kind of our hierarchy. So if we have done Bradstreet going on, you'll be able to see that global hierarchy of how a record sits. Um, in this example, though, that is not the case, but everything on the left side of the screen is our customer master data. And then we also are connecting to our data lake to get transactional data to relate to this. So as we look at this distributor, we can also see our recent orders, our sales our volumes, what we're selling as products across the board. Each one of these can be very unique. This uh, canvas is, is very uh, open to making any kind of look and feel that you want. Here's another example of where we use our Dun Bradstreet information to help show the organization name, what sources came up, being able to show you the Dun Bradstreet company hierarchy as, as we need it, all our points of contact and our Dun Bradstreet information. So again, Everything is very unique on being able to build you what you want on a screen versus being stuck with it. Also with our flow is, is the ability to go in and add new records. So we can create that ability to have a, a entrance, entrance point for your stewards to type in information and that information would get saved to the screen. If there is issues with those records, um, as we had talked about the data stewardship, we can come into the govern area and in our govern area, we can come in here and, and filter by either by source systems or by issues. So, you know, there are a lot of different issues. Actually, if I come over here to analyze for a moment, I can show you all our different issues that could happen in data quality and master data management. And so in that govern screen, you'll have the ability to sort by data quality errors or, mat or mat multiple matches and match down or correct that record and resubmit it on our governed screen as another way of stewarding instead of showing you the technical views in master data management. The last piece here I'll show you is, is a lot of times we have customer onboarding that needs to happen. How do we create a new customer? And so we can mask this in, inside your website where we can go in and create our customer, have it run into locate and get re-enriched before we even save that record into master data management or into a data lake. And so in here, we can type in our information. It will type it all in for you, validate that information. So as you can see, I typed in a zip code of 33703, but in our zip code, it came back with that it found that plus four. So we can have the ability to say, use this um, address versus using the other address. So. Lots of really nice ways to do uh, address cleansing, onboarding of customers, viewing of customers in the flow screens. So we're gonna come back into our presentation model here. So we talked through our master data hub. 
We've talked through data catalog and prep and flow, very high level. Again, these demos can go for hours long. So if you want more information, please contact us. Um, you know, as we talk about why we recommend Master Data Hub, you know, that is, there are, there are basically four main reasons that we use it. The, the main one starting out is that initial matching, getting all your different systems matched down. But then as we get through all that matching on day one, it's really around how are we going to uh, do search before creates on those records, either from the legacy systems or getting to a point where we're building out a, a, a flow screen for being our entrance point for future records and flow that would sit into our master data management screens. And just as you know, three potential financial outcomes of this, uh, you know, opportunity, cost, and risk. As you can see on the screen here, you know, there are value adds, especially as we look at trying to centralize data. It, it will make for uh, analytics moving faster and, and having one place to go. GDPR is very important to us. So having the ability to quickly remove a customer records information, having that centralized hub will help from a GDPR side. And then really just costs on reducing the ability to have so many different people and so many different systems doing the same things. Uh, having a, a centralized master data management solution will help with, with, with that cost as well. So as, as you need to move ahead, you know, you can email me at our Hartley at here on consulting group. We are a Boomi partner of the year award. We have many accelerators. We have a very experienced team of individuals here to help you through your Boomi solution.